we are thrilled to be joined online by Kona Taro, Minister for Digital Transformation of Japan. Following his remarks, Dmitry Sevastopolo, U.S.-China correspondent from the Financial Times, will moderate a short Q&A. Uh, good morning, everyone, and good evening, Minister Kono. Um, I feel slightly lonely on the stage here, but it's great to see you. I have about five screens. I can see you in many different ways. Um, <laughs> thank you for being with us. Um, I'm going to jump right in. in. In the last couple of years, we've seen a huge change in Japan in defense policy, in foreign policy, a national security strategy, a trilateral with the U.S. president and the South Korean president at Camp David recently. But can you speak broadly about what are the things in the technology sphere that the U.S. and Japan can do more together? All right. Um, good evening or good morning, wherever you are. Um, I have been to Washington as foreign minister and uh, defense minister. But now, as a minister for digital transformation and a minister for cybersecurity, I feel I should be participating online. Well, anything digital and cyber in Japan come under my portfolio. Uh, if I come to Washington, D.C., and uh, if I wanted to talk about digital and cyber, I have to go to the State Department, Commerce, Homeland Security, USTR, and maybe the White House. So I guess it is a high time for the United States government to create the Secretary of Digital. I think you're the only one who don't have a digital minister among the G7 countries. Well, when I was an undergrad at Georgetown University, anything made in Japan was considered to be of the state of the art. Now, nearly four decades later, we are trying hard to catch up with the rest of the world in digital technology. I'm wondering why we have fallen behind in digital transformation. I guess uh, one reason is uh, Hanko or name stamp. Everyone loves Hanko or name stamp, and you have to have a red stamp on the paper. So anything and everything must be printed on paper so you can put the stamp on. The writing system matters too. You only have 26 letters in English alphabet, but in the Japanese language, we have just about the 70,000 kanji or Chinese character, most of which have three or four pronunciations and could have multiple meanings. Plus two sets of alphabet, each of which has 50 letters. So we need to assign a computer code fonts keystroke for each and every character and alphabet. Well, the mentality matters as well. We have made some mistakes, just like any other government. For example, we mislabeled 80,000 IDs in the health insurance system of 120 million people. Uh, the mistake ratio is about 0.006%. But for the Japanese consumers who are so used to the Toyota quality, one mistake is just one too many. And uh, floppy disk and fax machines still hold some important position in the offices. So my job as a Minister for Digital Transformation is to overcome these difficulties and change the Japanese society. Well, I guess for many years, AI and robots have been friends with the Japanese as they help offset the labor shortage in our society. We have never thought robots and AI would steal jobs from us. But the rapid development of the recent generative AI technology has shown us some new faces. One of my parliamentary colleagues asked an AI platform to draw a Japanese temple. And the AI came back with a very strange looking building with Mount Fuji and cherry blossoms in the back. Most of the AI platforms are learning with data sets in mainly English language. Any language other than English has become a minority language for AI. 
we need to correct the language bias in AI. And what we are worried about uh, is disinformation and the fake news created by AI. They're going to be threatening our values and democracy and the enemies uh, attacking our critical digital infrastructure. Unlike the threat of the nuclear weapons, there is no deterrence for the threat of digital weapons. So, so far, we have only experienced some digital crimes, but the enemies could use the digital power to cause the real damage. So the United States, Japan, and like-minded countries need to work together to defend our uh, values and infrastructure and dissuade enemy attacks. We need some frameworks for the cybersecurity cooperation among the like-minded countries. And that is why we need a Secretary of Digital in Washington, D.C. Well, um, the European people wanted to regulate uh, technology, especially digital technology up front. They wanted to regulate first. I guess Japan and the United States we want to let technology develop first. And then if it's necessary, we regulate. So there's a, a place that Japan and the United States uh, could work together and guide where the technology is uh, going. Um, so uh, right now we are seeing uh, once global internet is becoming something like a uh, splinter net, and uh, there's going to be a red cyberspace. So we need to be very careful. Japan and the United States need to reach out to the global south, and uh, we need to defend our values, and we need to defend our democracy. So there's a lot of things we need to work together between Japan and the United States and uh, like-minded countries. So as a minister for digital transformation and the minister for cybersecurity, uh, we'll be looking forward to working with Washington, D.C. and the United States. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I can tell you I have a half 11-year-old uh, Japanese son who asked me last week, why do I need a name stamp and a digital agent? <laughs> I, I'm going to ask him to watch your presentation. Um, can you tell, is there anything in Japan in terms of AI that Japan is doing uniquely that the US could learn from? And what are some specific things that the US and Japan could do together in the AI area, particularly when you think about how China is uh, plowing ahead in this field? Uh, yes. Well, as I said, uh, the Japanese people are very uh, friendly with AI technology. We don't, we don't think it is going to be a big threat to the society, um, but it could be used as a weapon against the society and against our values. So we need to be very careful. I'm a bit worried that some people wanted to uh, regulate the use of AI technology or uh, some people wanted to ban AI technology at school. I think that's a very uh, negative way to deal with uh, emerging technology. Mm -hmm. uh, only way to counter negative usage of AI technology is to get AI technology developed so we can use AI technology to counter uh, malicious use of AI. Uh, right now, we are a bit falling behind uh, in making uh, Japan's own AI platforms. And uh, the government is looking at the way to uh, develop AI platform for the future. As I said, there is a severe uh, language uh, discrepancy. Everything that made by US, UK, uh, you feed them with English data set. Uh, so we, we need to work with US, but we need to promote uh, non-English data set 
And uh, in order to do that, we need to get Europeans, uh, Asians, African people joining us so that uh, we can manage. DFFD, data free flow with trust, the concept that we have been promoting since 2019 uh, is a big, uh, big thing for even AI technology. The free flow of uh, data across the border is very important for AI development. So that's what we are looking at right now. Do you personally use AI in your daily life? Do you have an app on your phone that uh, people here would be surprised by? Uh, well, my staff use AI, or I mean, chat GPT to write my speech for certain <laughs> events. Not it's, this one. It's, it's clearly very good, so AI is working. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to I switch a little bit to um, the cyber area and cyber defenses. You know, when people talk about the possibility of Japan in the future joining something like the Five Eyes Intelligence Sharing Network, there's usually a couple of concerns raised, one about um, having a security clearance system. But I think probably mm -hmm. the bigger one is, does Japan have sufficient cyber defenses? And so my question is, what are you doing to harden Japanese cyber defenses? And if at some point in the future there was a Chinese attack or invasion of Taiwan, some people think it will be accompanied by a huge cyber attack, including on Japan because of its alliance with the US. Is Japan ready for something like that? And if not, what are you doing to, uh, to get ready? Uh, yes, we need to, we are, I could say we are now making our cyber, cyber defense stronger. And uh, we, need, we are right now recruiting uh, necessary personnel uh, to the government. And uh, we are training them. So we should be um, ready in short term. And uh, as, as you say, there's al already some uh, disinformation warfare going on in Japan. And we can most likely uh, attribute where they are coming from. And uh, we need to be uh, ready for that. It is more difficult to make decision to actually create the kinetic warfare by any leaders of the country, but it is a lot easier to initiate a cyber warfare against uh, others. So we really need to be uh, ready for that, and uh, we really need to step up our defense against uh, critical infrastructure. And uh, I think United States, Japan, Australia, South Korea, uh, other like-minded country in Asia uh, need to uh, come up with some kind of mechanism uh, against the cyber attacks uh, coming from the possible enemies. So uh, making five eyes to six eyes, or at least five eyes and a wink would be a very good idea. And uh, we, should, uh, we should be able to have the necessary capability to be part of it. When, you, when you're trying to do that, what is the big challenge in terms of strengthening your cyber defenses? And I'm curious, a lot of people in the US lament the fact that there aren't enough Americans studying science uh, in university. Does Japan have enough young people coming through the educational pipeline who are interested in these areas? Uh, and sufficient to do what the government needs to do? Do you have the talent pool you need? Uh, well, that is uh, one of the major issues. And uh, frankly speaking, we don't have enough people. So we need to work with our education system. And that would be one of my big agenda. And uh, yes, so we need to uh, learn to work with uh, people in the United States or people in Korea, Singapore, other countries. Uh, that is one thing. And also, uh, we are ready to defend uh, Japan. But uh, in cyber warfare, you, need, you probably need more than that. So we are now debating, what are we going to do? How, how, forward, uh, how forward we can go to actually defend Japan? I mean, we can, 
we can win 99 times. We can defend Japan 99 times, but if we lose one, um, that's, that will create a big mess. So not, not just uh, defending Japan, but we need to do a little bit more than that. And uh, it will Im involve the constitutional uh, debate. So I think that's what we're going to be doing in the government. So are you talking about having an offensive capability? Well, I didn't say that, but uh, <laughs> as, a, as a minister in charge of cybersecurity, uh, I would be part of the debate. Excellent. Possibly made some news. We'll see. Um, we're getting close to the end, so I'm, I'm going to end on, on a lighthearted note. Um, uh, in Japan, uh, Ambassador Rahm Emanuel has been wrapped on the knuckles over the last couple of days for some of his tweets, um, particularly his tweets quoting Agatha Christie and Shakespeare and talking about China. Um, you're quite famous for some of your tweets too, like last week when you went up the stairs after the cabinet uh, photograph <laughs> and, and you were on the stairs and all the other ministers were on the escalator and you said you wanted to get home quickly. So my question to you is, um, you also gave up three months of your salary to, um, you know, in, in response to some of the errors at the ministry that you said you should take responsibility for. Do you think Ambassador Emmanuel should give up three months of his salary for some of the tweets he's been sending out? I don't think so. Um, we really appreciate his being in Japan. He is one of the best ambassadors that uh, you have uh, sent to Japan. So, I mean, he is uh, very easy to work with and uh, he produced, uh, you know, a lot of good things. So, and uh, we love his tweet about, you know, he's getting on the uh, bullet train, metro, you know, he loved taking photo in the trains and a lot of people enjoy that. So we have 10 seconds left. Uh Tourism's coming back to Japan. The yen is weak. It's a great time to visit Japan. If Americans wanted to go to Japan, what is the one thing in the technology area that they should go and visit that will surprise them in, in 10 seconds? Wow. <laughs> well, there are so many good places. And as you said, the yen's cheap. So you're very welcome. And uh, come join us. And uh, well, China is talking about some. Uh, thing about uh, Japanese fish, but uh, we have very fresh fish and uh, you're welcome to enjoy sushi, sashimi, wherever you are in Japan. You've just made the whole room hungry. Um, I'd like to ask everyone to give a big round of applause to Minister Kono Taro. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.